Welcome to Makers International, a podcast of makers from around the world, talking with makers from around the world. Here's Jamie Page, Steve Twidell, Chris Cute, and now your host, Richard Morley. Hello, 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 hello. Stop. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, good times, whatever time it is. I'm not Richard, because he's sick and he's not here, but I am the real Steve. Uh, you're very welcome and to the Makers International podcast live. How are you? Uh, and with us this evening, we have Mr. Chris Q, as usual. <laughs> How are you doing? Mr. Jamie Page. Can't hear you, Steve. I think there's something wrong with your mic. Yeah, nice try, Jamie. <laughs> that, only works, that only works one week at a time. <laughs> uh, how are you, folks? Good? Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. Uh, okay. Uh, pff, eh, pff, eh, shout outs this week. Uh, I don't have any. So I'm just going to go straight to the chat. There's like 50 million people there already. Uh, we have Rubo Arts, Dave the Wood Barber. Oh, hold on. The Pohol Barn Productions. I think I pronounced that. Fix it up, make it new. Kurum Hussein. Uh, Andy Pugh, Leona Fay, Wayne the Wood Turner, and Andy from AH Bespoke, and a load of other people there. I'm not going to go through everyone, but you're all very welcome. And just let me just read the notes here because I'm really professional. Just a quick reminder that today's podcast is brought to you in part by Yorkshire Grit, the wood turners of Brazier's Paste. Uh, our good friend Chad over at Mancrafting, who makes awesome powder-coated custom Yeti mugs, otherwise known as Mancrafting mugs. And Pam from Highland Boxes and her amazing, fantastic, superb resin and hybrid blanks. Awesome. The links to all our sponsors are in the description and can also be found on our webpage, which is makersinternationalpodcast.com forward slash forward roll jumper diddly do. Sponsors. <laughs> it's just, where's, the, where's the button on my keyboard for a jump a little be do? <laughs> <laughs> it's that one uh, right Chris. there, Chris. It's over to you. Do we have any <laughs> random listener questions? <laughs> well, yeah, where's that button on my keyboard? Anyway, um, yeah, yes, Steve, and thank you. And well done jumping in for Richard, who's got the sniffles. Um, well, I only found out 10 minutes ago, so I didn't, yeah, I didn't well, do yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Join the club, so this is not our fault, folks. Um, uh, before I get to the question, Andy Pugh is actually in the chat. And, Andy, I know Andy was having some issues about a little more than a week ago. So, Andy, I hope you're feeling better, buddy. We, mm. we, all, we all wish that you are on the mend and feeling much better than you were, you know, eight or nine days ago. He's um, back uploading, yeah. so I think all good is again. All, all's good again, yeah. So. All right. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad to hear it. Um, we do have a question, and it's from Sean. Um, how do you pronounce Sean's last name again, Jamie? Everly, I think. Sean Everly. In case you're not familiar, Sean had the YouTube channel called SE Woodwork. I believe he's moved it over to his um, real name now. He changed the name of his channel to Sean. And the last name um, Jamie can pronounce, I can't. Um, anyway, uh, he had a question for uh, Steve, you, and I guess also you, Jamie, too. Um, he says he's currently working on turning four legs uh, for a new table project that he's doing. He says he's using Yorkshire Grit. And that is, it's obviously leaving the legs very shiny and obviously at a very high grit. Uh, he says he hasn't finished the legs yet. Do either of you um, have any suggestions of a finish that will work well over the top of Yorkshire grit? He says he was worried that because they are so obviously shiny, that he was worried that because they're so smooth, so shiny, that a regular finish might not adhere to the legs. And so he was. He said he was actually hoping to use either something like a Danish or a linseed oil, but he wasn't sure. So, do you guys have any recommendations? Can you act? Well, here's. I guess the basic question is: Can you put a finish over Yorkshire grit? You yes. Can do, yeah. Um, as I'll, long I'll, as when. Sorry, Jamie. Uh, as long as what, as long as when he applied it and he buffed it off, as long as he took all the residue off of 
off of it so he removed all the wax reg residue that was left then he can put any finish that he wants on top of that yeah so so you basically buff it until the paper towel is clean you, there's yeah. no no yorkshire grit comes off the paper onto the paper towel um normally if i was to put an oil on i'll my personal preference would be danish oil but obviously mm -hmm. you can use it you can use absolutely anything you want and then go on to your choices of waxes and you can so that, finish it with whatever, whatever you like. See, I was I was mistaken, obviously, but I was under the impression that Yorkshire grit was a waxed base, some kind of substance that yeah, has. It, 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 it does have uh, beeswax in it, so you can use it as a finish if you want. But, okay, so um, so, it, so you main need to, is and abrasive. So you would need to stay away from water-based finishes because they would they, they're not going to adhere to a wax, obviously. But you are removing. The way, I mean, some of the some of it will go into the wood. Yes, um, it has mineral oil, lemon oil, beeswax, rotten stone, and pumice in in it, which build which makes up um, Yorkshire grit. But um, whenever I've used Yorkshire grit, I've put a multitude of finishes on it: oils, waxes. I, you can even put a CA glue finish straight over the top of oh, Yorkshire grit. Oh. But, yeah, yeah. And you could actually wipe it down with like a mineral spirits first, and then yes, put the exactly. If you were, if you were yeah. concerned with any wax that was there, you could wipe it down with like a mineral spirits, and you could put a finish over yeah. top of that. Okay. Yeah, because Yorkshire yeah. grit isn't actually a finish. Some people get confused with the fact that they think it's an actual finish, but it's not. It's an abrasive paste, exactly what it says on the tin. It's an abrasive yeah. paste. If yes, it leaves it shiny, but if it's something that's going to be handled a lot i.e. a table where you're going to be moving it or kids are going to be touching it or people are going to be touching it all the time, it will dull very quickly. It's, yeah, it's not a finish. So it's, it's you're just leaving it bare wood with a very, very slight finish of Yorkshire grit on it. So, yeah, wipe it down and you can put any finish you want into it. Um, you can even, uh, with Yorkshire grit, you can use a, a clear lacquer too. You can use a spray lacquer. It will take uh, resin can be wiped onto it. So you can, it, you can finish anything on top of Yorkshire grit. Okay, so he'd be yeah. fine with like a Danish oil or linseed oil, yes. what he yeah. was up to. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Sean, I hope that helps. Hope that answered your question. And you know what? He asked that a week ago, so by now he may already be finished with the leg. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how timely that answer is. But for people in the future, if you want to know, there you go. Um, and Leona, sorry, Leona Faye. Before we move on, no, microfine is not a finish. It is just a higher grade of sanding wax. It's gotcha. it, even yeah. Uh, the the microfine is not a finish either. None of the Yorkshire grit products are a, a finish. Right. It's so it's like it, it it may look pretty when you take it off the lathe, but the finish yeah. that you think is on there isn't durable yeah, at all. Yeah. It's okay. literally just it's just literally like finishing with a one thousand grit sandpaper. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, now we have, we've got something pretty exciting coming up. Um, I don't know if one of you guys wants to introduce today's topic or not, but we're going to spend the next two weeks talking about this because, like, the event of the year is like a, a, only a couple weeks away. I I don't know how many days we actually are away from it, but uh, Maker Central, twenty nineteen. Oh, meant my birthday. No, oh, Steve. Thought you meant mine. <sighs> I'm surprised you're even happy to celebrate your birthdays anymore. I quit when I turned oh, 40. When I, when, when, we're, when we're, I, we're not even anywhere near your age, Chris. So well, well, when I turned 40 yet. years old, I just said, this, you know, I'm not celebrating anything from here on out. <laughs> it's just a bad <laughs> reminder from now on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. so Maker Central. Um, we've had some inquiries when we announced what we were talking about, people who wanted some information. Um, gentlemen, we were all three at last year's show. You two are going to be at this year's show. People are mm -hmm. wanting, wanting to know some general info about the show for people that are first-time attendees. So people that are going there for the first time, what can they expect? Um, maybe some need to know stuff and maybe that's where we should get started. You know, people that are traveling from abroad, I mean, people who actually live in the UK are going to be well aware of these things, but people traveling from the States, Canada, you know, somewhere in Europe who may ne may never have been to, um, England before, they're going to want to know how certain things work. Like what, what, after I get off the plane guys, what do I do? Um, you know, from there until they get to Birmingham and that is, I guess is what we're talking about. So. Do you guys have any suggestions you would like to make? Get drunk. Hit the, 
hit the bar straight away. <laughs> Get drunk. Okay. Because well, well, it's going to carry on from there. <laughs> Yeah, get practiced in before you get to the show. <laughs> yeah. Before you meet Steve. What is it they say? <laughs> when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Yeah, well, if you're, when you're in England, go ahead and get drunk. Do what the English do. Get accustomed uh, to Guinness, especially if you're going to be talking to me at the bar. All right. Well, honestly, all right. I'm going to try to take this serious because if there are people out there that are traveling to the UK for the first time, um, I traveled to Britain for the first time last year. And there are some things that you probably, or you may depending on your personality, may want to avoid or may want to do. First of all, um, if you can, if you're, let's, let's put it this way. If you're flying into Heathrow, if you're flying into London and you're planning on taking a train up to Birmingham, I made the mistake, and I only consider this a mistake for myself because I thought it sucked, um, was that I, uh, I flew into Heathrow and we took the London Underground to the closest station that was by a train station. Okay, but the train station that we, the, the underground station, by the way, that we had to get off on was almost a mile away from the actual train station that we had to go to to get onto a train to go to Birmingham. And you got to remember, for a mile, I had to walk through the streets of London carrying all the baggage that I had checked onto the airplane. And that was a pain in the ass, um, only because... Obviously, I had to walk a mile. Um, I had to fight the crowds, and I was wearing shoes that just really were not comfortable, so it wasn't fun. But if you want to do that, just understand what you're up against, okay? My suggestion would be, and what I was going to do this year when I was still planning on going, was when you get to Heathrow and you get off the plane and you get your luggage, go hire yourself a freaking cab and have the, have the cabbie take you to the train station. It's, a, it's more money, but it will save you a lot of hassle. Now, if you don't want to do that and you want to take the London Underground, Jamie, there's a card or something. Um, I, you, yeah, the, you, uh, it's called the Oyster card. Okay. Do you want to explain to people mm. how they can get that, how it works? Oysters. Um, mm. Yeah, oysters. <laughs> um, <laughs> basically, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a blue card, if you like, uh, with two different tones of blue. It's like a turquoise and like a royal blue card. And basically, what it is it's like um, it's like a, a pay-as-you-go ticket, if you like, for a, a, an under for the underground and for the buses. I'm not sure if you can use it in taxis. I don't think you can. Um, but basically, what it is is you you go and buy one, and then you you go and top it up, and you all you do is every time you need to go through a, a gate or whatever it is to go on the underground you just zap the top of it and it automatically takes off the credit that you need to make that journey gotcha. and the, the card knows how much it to take off and if you've made that return journey it knows to take off the said amount you can uh, you can set up an account online you can buy one when you at a certain train stations so yeah they're they're very handy to have and that works for both the underground and also for above ground, uh, like bus transportation. In case you want to, hop no, I, I don't think they work for the overground trains. That's a completely buses? separate ticket. Yes, the buses, I believe they work. Yeah, okay. yeah. The the Virgin Atlantic trains that you're going to want to get onto, or one of those, I think there's two lines that run. One is Virgin Atlantic, which is what I used, um, is not going to accept that Oyster car, but it will help you pay for your underground and if you want to get use the buses. Um, we're getting a lot of questions from people that apparently live in the UK that don't understand why people would be flying into Heathrow and not flying directly into Birmingham. I can tell you why. Uh, one reason prior to pr primarily, um, the length of the flight times you're going to spend in an airport. If you fly into Birmingham, at least from the oh, United sorry, States. Sorry, standpoint. Chris. Sorry, Chris. Can I just quickly interrupt? Uh, sure. Straw bright workshop said Oyster is fine on the overground. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, use the yeah, Oyster I, card I, on the overground as well. Yeah. We're, I stand we're corrected. Straight. All right. Uh, first of all, if I was to fly directly into Birmingham, my flight time, meaning layovers and things of that nature, because from the U.S., it would, they would actually fly me to Dublin, and I would have a layover in Dublin and then have to go from Dublin to Birmingham because there's no direct flight actually from New York City to Birmingham. Plus, on top of that, not only is it a longer flight, but that flight costs about $300 more than a flight to Heathrow. 
And so the reason why people are flying into Heathrow is primarily because it's cheaper. It's a lot cheaper, and it's because it's it's not going to cost you three hundred dollars to get on the train in London and 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 ride up to Birmingham. Mm -hmm. And actually, by the time you actually finish it with all the connecting flights you have to do to fly into Birmingham, it's actually quicker to fly into Heathrow, get on a train, and ride up to Birmingham. So that's I hope that answers your question. And Birmingham, apparently, according to <laughs> Andy, uh, is is a sucky airport. So there you go. There's three reasons why. Yeah. It's it's an okay airport. Oh, by the way, your Oyster card, 15% um, of all purchases go towards helping unfortunate oysters around the world. So that's a, that's another good thing about the Oyster card. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of people that are paranoid. I know that um, we have our friend Dan Brent who's been in all the chat groups wondering because he's, he's freaking out about traveling for the first time. I guess the only advice I would tell you is just relax. Get yeah. on the plane. Get on the plane. Get off the plane, get your luggage, find somebody that looks like they work there and ask questions and don't freak out about it. One way or another, you're going to get to your destination. So don't, you know, don't, don't put too much pressure on yourselves, folks. I mean, it, it's, it's just not that complicated. People have traveled for the first time for, you know, centuries. Um, I would even, suggest, I would suggest also that if you have a maker's t-shirt and you are traveling or a, um, make a central t-shirt that you have bought or anything like that one that other people would recognize wear that when you fly and when you arrive at the airport because it's guaranteed that there are going to be other people arriving at the same time as you or in and around the same time and if they see you wearing that shirt or you see other people wearing a shirt that you recognize it's going to be a lot easier to go over and ask and say hey do you know what the hell's happening because i don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah there you go yeah, there you well, go. I mean, I, when I got off the plane at Heathrow, there was, uh, th there was, after I picked up my luggage, there was an information desk there. And then, you know, we asked and got on the train because we wanted to know where, where do we go to take the underground. Then we were told. So we walked down and took the underground. And when we got to the underground, the, the train, the underground train station, there was actually an info desk there and people working there. I was like, okay, oh, we were looking to go to Birmingham. Oh, how do we get there from here? And then, you know, it's like, you need to get on, go to the train over here and go, that. oh, okay, thanks. It's just not hard ask questions yeah that's yeah. a good point that, that not the real steve said as well he said that uh also if people are flying or are worried about stuff they can always message one of any of us that they know on facebook that, that might be in the uk or instagram and just ask don't be afraid i mean everyone's someone is going to be online at some point so don't freak out or panic yeah uh, good point not the real steve thank you that, that, that also brings up kind of uh, uh, another little thing um to mention as well if you are coming from the the states, Australia, wherever uh, abroad, it might be an idea to contact your phone service provider and let them know that you're traveling. Uh, you may be able to get a um, a bolt on or whatever it's called um, to make sure you don't get extra charges for using your phone whilst in the UK, which can be substantial, by the way. Which, which can, which, yeah. Um, cause I ended up when I traveled to Boston for the first, for the first trip to the USA, I, my, one of my uncles decided he wanted to send out loads and loads of jokes. And, uh, I received, uh, a, quite a substantial bill for receiving the messages. And that's, mm -hmm. that was obviously without, without me making the calls. So now I've got a bolt on and it doesn't cost me any extra for making or receiving calls. Gotcha. Uh, all right, Dan, uh, Dan is actually in the chat. Dan, okay, I'm sorry. Dan says he's more freaked out about meeting people than he in the flight. Okay, <laughs> well, Dan, don't be afraid of people. They're easy. I mean, if they piss yeah. you off, punch, punch them in the nose. It's not a big deal. Um, Jamie, wasn't there something about credit cards too that we were talking about earlier? That if you if people are traveling from abroad, that they because I know that in the UK and a lot of places in Europe, there's the the credit card that you might have that you can tap and then yeah, pay for whatever um, you want. Well, the, the yeah. people in the states, we don't have those kind of cards. At least they're not very prevalent. So yeah, we, we uh, over here with the the, uh, the debit cards, we we tend to use contactless quite a lot. For, I mean, it's up to a certain amount of money, but we uh, we tend to use contactless. And if if it goes over that, we we usually get asked to enter a pin number. Um, now I, I wasn't sure about this with um the U.S. people. Um. Now I'm guessing it's better to be safe than sorry um, to kind of make sure that you come over knowing your pin number. 
in case you get asked to use it. Now, I spoke to Chris um, about this, and I think you said you couldn't really remember having to put your PIN number in, um, mm -hmm. but I spoke to Heath Knuckles, and he said on a couple of occasions he did have to use his PIN number. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I want... Well, I... <laughs> In retrospect, I do remember having to use my pin number once, and it was when I was making a cash withdrawal because I had left some money. I had left a lot of my my British cash in my hotel room, and I was short, and I wanted to pay cash for something. I forget what it was, but I did have to go to like an ATM and withdraw some money, and I obviously needed my pin number there. But buying drinks at the hotel, I didn't need to do that. I paid for my hotel. I didn't need a pin number. It just because because my debit card also works as a credit card, so they just printed out a receipt. I signed it and was you know was good. But I yeah. didn't go to any neighborhood shops to buy a candy bar or a coke. So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I yeah yeah. So yeah, I, mean, I, I mean, obviously, the last thing you want to do is go into a store or whatever and say you need something emergent, some emergency supplies or whatever, whatever that may be. <laughs> and you can't get it. You, you Guinness, can't get it Guinness. because yeah, <laughs> you can't get it because you you haven't got a pin number, you know. Um, yeah, no, another thing to bear in mind as well. Sorry, sorry, JP. Go on. Uh, yeah. Also, so, also something that you got to remember, and this actually happened with Bobby Duke. Um, make sure that your cards are signed on the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sign if you make a if you make a purchase and it's not signed, that's how they um compare the two to say okay that is you and if it's not signed they won't allow the transaction to, uh, transaction to be completed because it, the, you could be somebody you know obviously yeah you, you might have found that card in other words exactly. and another thing to remember as well uh with regards to the hotel is make sure that you either carry the credit card that you originally booked the hotel with with you yes or let the hotel know before you arrive or before you even leave that you will not be using the credit card that you used to originally book the room because a lot of people get caught out with that that when they go to pay they say well it's not the credit card that you gave us originally you know and because i think their mind is that you could just be any joe public walking up yeah so heard, it to, heard, it, someone, well, heard someone mention their name and then trying to get their room in front of them so yeah um so make yeah. sure you, you let them know and also if you've used a credit card, like a Visa credit card or something like that to book the room, and you then use a debit card to pay for your room, expect a long delay on getting any deposit or any funds back again or put, being re, re, reimbursed onto your card. With a credit card, yeah. it happens straight away. But with a, um, a debit card, it can be up to two weeks that they they hold off before they pay back any deposit. So yeah, yeah. just just be aware of that one too. Is yeah. there an, is there anything else that we need to cover? I mean, because we've we've got when you get off the plane, uh, two options: take the underground, grab a cab to the train station. Because you cannot grab the train from Heathrow or from the airport if you're if you're flying into Heathrow. But if you're flying into Birmingham, then it's just a cab to the hotel. It's I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to worry about it, which I suppose would yeah. be a good idea. If that's worth three hundred dollars to you, then go ahead and do it. Um, but <laughs> most people probably would rather save the money and whatever. So we, we've got covered that. We've covered how to pay for things. Um, what else is there? Anything else, Jamie or Steve? Yeah, that there people was, traveling there for the first time should probably know. Yeah, there was there was one more, there was one more thing that is kind of was kind of um and ah and over. Um, but again, um, Jake and I. Got, uh, went ahead and did this anyway because we was unsure. It was something I'd never heard of before. So whether it's a, a new thing or not. Now, uh, when Jake comes over, we, he's hot, we're hiring a car for two weeks. So um, he's gonna, he's gonna, he, you, you guys are going to rent a car? Yeah, we're hiring the car because we want to okay. do some traveling and things like that after uh, during while he's over. So we went on the, the, the website for hiring a car and we basically said what's needed to hire a car and it basically said something about him needing a international driving permit um now we we I, i'd never heard of this before um so we looked into it a little bit further and it cost jake went to his 
a, a local um, office near him and it cost him like $35 to go and get it done. He needed two passport photos and uh, obviously his driving license um, or something like that. Again, I I don't know if what how this if how old this is but it's, it says on the website um for non-eu and international uh, an international driving permit is required if the license is not written in english well obviously like we was just saying before the podcast went live american canadian australian that's it would all be written in english so but when we looked deeper into it um the offices in uh, the USA, he walked straight in and they were sort of like, yeah, you, you need it, basically. So so better safe than sorry if you're going to do that. So go, go get the international again, permit. Yeah. For, 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 30, for, uh, for $35, to, uh, yeah, it's best better to be safe than sorry. So from, from, like, if somebody was flying in from a country that is not uh, predominantly English-speaking, Germany, France, Spain, um, and they would want to get that permit because their driver's license wouldn't say in English who they are, what, you know, all the, you know, blah, blah, blah. The information wouldn't be in English. And what you're saying is that no, the, I, I the think rental car that, agency is going to want to see what you, who and what you are and where you live in English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so, that's, that's actually the third option. You know what? That's actually if you can afford it. And if it, I don't know how Jimmy, how expensive was that? Do you remember to to hire a car? What, to, hi, to hire a car to hire the car for two weeks. I mean, we're talking like a it's about a fifteen Ford pound Focus, a day, isn't it? About, about a Ford Focus. So I think that's like a, a five seat a car. So that I think it it costs about five or six hundred pound. So it's really not that bad. But if you so wanted for, to, but, and that's for two, for two weeks, two though, weeks. It, it would obviously cost substantially less if you were flying in and flying out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. That, and you know what? That's Being, the third option. So Because they have rental car agencies right there at the airport. If you're flying it once again into Heathrow, just go to the rental car agency, get yourself a car, and drive yourself to Birmingham. That would save a lot of, you know, pain. And, you know, it would cost you more, yeah. obviously. It would just going to cost you more money, yeah. but. Again, be really careful with your credit cards with the um, with the higher centers too, because they have a lot of premiums and things that they add on to prices of higher cars, especially insurance. They'll really cripple you with the price of insurance. And some higher companies expect you to have at least 300 pounds on your credit card before they'll even allow you to use that credit card to hire a car you have to have that amount and they'll they'll hold that amount as a deposit on your card again pretty similar to the hotel so again make sure you use your credit card yeah and, and the one you're bringing from abroad that you've booked the the hire car because um they will sting you and again it will take a long time to get that that deposit back again and if you're staying a few days and you're depending on a tight budget and you're depending on your credit card um, to use that if you spend over the amount you have on the card and <laughs> you know you're automatically yeah. going to have 300 pound frozen on your account when you get that car so just keep that in mind I mean, so there are three yeah. different ways you can fly into London and get to Birmingham. And one way, one way or another, just you're going to get there. So, I mean, I mean, you don't need to really too worry about it too much. Um, I think the easiest way, uh, if and it costs a little bit more money, but not much, because obviously it costs more to hire a cab or a taxi from the airport yeah. to go to the train station than it does to take the London Underground. But it does it does allow you to let other people do all the work for you so you don't have to do it if and it doesn't cost that much more it's it costs the price of a cab ride from heathrow to the to the uh to the virgin atlantic or whatever train station you're going to and i think we uh andy I don't know Pugh, but we, andy we actually, had another sorry okay go ahead good ahead. yeah andy Pugh had another really good point too for those of you that have never hired a car before before you even set foot into the car or sit in the car open the door walk around that car and take a million photographs of the outside of that car and hold a newspaper with the day's date on it next to each photo you take and even go over to the guy that owns the car if you find any blemishes on it and say there is a friggin dent on this car i did not do it 
can you right. mark that off the chart? Make sure you do a walk around with the hire company because they will shaft you if they can. 100% they will. The, okay, mm -hmm. they'll charge you for any incidental damage yes. to the car. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's good advice. Um, right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I've just done a, a, a quick price check from, uh, say, Monday uh, for fr uh, fr Friday the 10th to Monday the 13th. Now, obviously, this is just one company, but I can't imagine it all companies being that far apart in price. So you're looking at roughly £30 a day um, from a so 100, 120 pounds. pounds. Yeah, 100, about 120 pounds if you want to rent your own car and drive back and forth. Okay, that, that I mean sense. that's for a, a, a big car, 120 right. pounds. So yeah, and if that's what so, you want to do, because that's not a bad way to see the countryside and things of that nature. Because I, I remember taking the train ride from uh, from London up to Birmingham. I mean, you see a lot of nice English country. I mean, if you want to just get on the roads and drive, then hey, power to you. I just found I it easier to hop on a train. That's all. Check your flights too, because some of those do deals on fly drives. Do you know some some of them you'll get a discount on the price of a hire car in with your flight. So just check your flight too. That I know some. If I was to fly from Ireland and hire a car, I'd get a discount through Ryanair um, with the hire companies because they've got deals that go on between the two of them. So I think Ryanair actually have shares in some of the hire companies. So awesome. um, so just check that out as well because you can get deals. Yeah. All right, so we've we've we hopefully we've helped you figure out how you want to get to the show. Uh, when when they get to the show, gentlemen, having you know the three of us having been there last year, um, there's going to be differences this year than there was last year. But do you want to tell people what they can expect uh, when they get there? I mean, what um, depending on what the hotel? I mean, I think the a lot of people. I don't want to say the majority. A lot of people are staying at the Hilton because the Hilton is within walking distance of the NEC, but there's obviously other yeah. ho other hotels around the area. There's also caravan parks uh, that I know Richard and, and Kat are taking advantage of because they have a caravan. They're going to drive up and they're going to park it there and they're going to actually stay in one of those. But once you get to the, once you get to the show, what can people expect? I mean, because the people that are first time uh, attendees will not know this and they're going to want to know, and obviously, they've probably seen a lot from last year. But if you guys want to give like an overview of what, what kind of things are going on there. Expect to be talking to a lot of people. Yeah, expect your feet to be aching, so wear comfortable shoes. Mm -hmm. um, you, you're going to see a whole lot of awesomeness, basically. You're going to see, every, you're going to see everyone that you've always spoken to online. And... Uh, yeah, it's it's just gonna, it's just generally going to be awesome. You're going to be in awe of everything. You're going to have adrenaline rushing, and it, it's there's no there's no words to say what you're going to see because it, it's just awesome. I think the first thing I remember from from last year um, was now. Just I don't mean to sound like I didn't have to do that, but. Um, because we were actually working the show last year, we didn't have to stand in line and present tickets. We kind of just walked up and showed our passes and then we walked right in. And, but there was a very long line of people uh, yeah, to get was. into the show. So if you're going on Saturday or you're going on Sunday and you don't want to stand in a long line, go early. Get in the line yeah. early. Um Either way, you're spending the time, but if you don't happen to enjoy the fact of being, you know, a cow in a line, then get there early. Um, if you don't care, I mean, it's probably going to take you the same amount of time either way, but there's a very long, there was a very, very, very long line to get into Maker Central last year. I, I just remember seeing people lined up around the side <laughs> of the NEC waiting to get in. So if you yeah. get there early, you'll be doing yourself a favor if you don't like standing. Very, around. very, very early. Yeah. And uh, I guess you guys call it standing in queue, or that there was a queue yeah. Yeah. Uh, of people. So, I, hey, I don't, I'm not British. I don't speak your language. Anyways. <laughs> the, the other thing I will say as well, because this came up a lot after Maker Central, uh, especially a, a few people that have kind of followed me on online and stuff like that. Do not be afraid to walk up to the people that you want to meet and say hello and introduce yourself. There are so many people that got back to me and said, oh, you were too busy, I didn't really want to annoy you. That's why we're going. That is 100% why everybody mm -hmm. is going to meet people that they haven't met and to get to talk to people that have been so good to follow them for a lot of years. So 
do not be afraid to walk up it doesn't matter how many subscribers that person has they will either turn around to you and say hi can you just give me a minute i'm a little bit busy at the moment but please come back or they'll yeah embrace you with open arms and, and introduce themselves they will not they won't be rude they will just literally say as it is and do not be afraid to go up and say hi because everyone yeah. is there for the same reason unless you're like me unless you're like me and dave the wood barber comes up to you then you just totally freaking annoy just him. avoid him <laughs> <laughs> which i still feel shameful about dave i'm sorry um and, and, and as the mad maker says uh <laughs> the annoy annoying steve is a great reason to go <laughs> yeah but here's what happened i can only tell you what went on last year um oh, and, what, God, and, what the, really? and, what, and what the differences will be this year first of all um last year um it, it you go into maker central and it's not a woodworking show it's not a metalworking show it's it is everything that you could possibly be interested in almost regarding making or crafts there is a section within that show that if you're interested in just one single thing like leather working there's the tandy booth there's people at tandy that are doing leather working stuff there's wood turning there's wood carving there's metal working there are people all over so you can find what your specific interest is and go spend some time at those booths but if you're there to kind of learn about all kinds of different kind of things there is a ton of different booths and people there that are on display doing things that you can watch ask questions of things of that nature last yeah. year there was one stage um, and it was real. And this year, Nick took for the recommendations from last year. There is now going to be um, Maker Central is actually going to be in a bigger facility, so it's going to be larger in space than it was last year. And there's going to be two stages, and they're going to be bigger than they were last year and elevated up to the point where people aren't having a hard time seeing the person who's actually on the stage. So Nick has done a lot of work. Nick and his team has done a lot of work to make sure that they have. The presentations that are available on the stages and there's going to be two of them there's a main stage and then there's i think there's a record power stage which is where you guys are going to be close by right yeah yeah record power i've got their own like booth stage area yeah yeah so there's going to be two stages this year with presentations going on on each of them all the time uh so there's you're not going to have a hard time finding something to do and there's actually a restaurant slash bar inside the NEC, uh, inside Maker Central, that actually has concessions. So you don't need to worry about lunch. And if you, if you want to go to lunch, you get your hand stamped when you walk in the door. You can walk out the door, go downstairs to the NEC, go to any one of the restaurants that are there in the NEC, and then go back upstairs and walk back in the door. Just show the guy at the door your little stamp that you have on your hand, and you get, get right back into the show. So food and drink is not a problem either. Yeah. Um, and again, when you're going up to the guys that are doing demonstrations, ask as many questions as you want. Don't be afraid to get in there and, and ask and ask if you can try it. I mean, most most <clears throat> booths are going to be uh, interactive booths, I believe. There, I know ours are so 100. Yeah. percent <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. <laughs> so <laughs> Simon says, of course, Chris knows there's a bar there. Simon, that's just not nice, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's true, but it's not nice. You don't need to point that out. All right. Come on, man. Give me a break. Um, but you're going to see a lot of, you're going to see a lot of, and I don't want to go down the list. I tell you what, in the link in the description uh, below is the Maker Central website. And I don't even think it's a complete list of everybody that's going to be there. The makers that are going to be at Maker Central. It's just the one that there's a list of people that are going to be there, makers that are going to be there. And it's just the link, the link that, or the list of people that Nick was able to compile to put the website up. And since then, he's added a few here and there, but you know, he can only do so much. So there's, if you're wondering who's going to be there that you would like to meet, go to the website. I think it's makercentral.co.uk, Jamie. Yeah, not .com. Go to that. <laughs> it just refuses to not make that unconfusing. Makerscentral.co.co.uk. Go to the website. You can see <laughs> the makers that Bobby or that <laughs> that Nick has listed. And uh, you might find somebody that, hey, I'm going to look that guy up. Make sure I say hello or that girl or that woman. Because there are some, uh, I mean, we met, who was it we met last year that had the, uh, the uh the puppet the uh the wooden what was her name we actually had her on the show oh yeah 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 um 
Laura, was it Laura? Croft. Laura Croft. Is no, it? no, Laura Croft. <laughs> That's freaking Laura Croft. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and I'm not even a gamer. <laughs> anyway, Laura, it was it was Laura Matthews, by the way. Okay. That's her. That's, That's it. The one. That's it. Yeah, I but knew she, it began with C. And I and I and I didn't know her from from Hell in a Handbasket until I went to Maker Central. But she was there, and she had this incredible thing. She was just walking around with. These are the kind of people you're gonna see. Um, the, I mean, there are people around there that are obviously in Boost doing their own things, but there are other people that bring their own work with them and are there to show you what they do. It's just a really cool sharing experience. And it's, I, I think the most, if you've been in the States anyway, so I, I'm going to talk to my fellow Amer Americans for a second. If you've been to oh. a, if you've been to a woodworking show in the U S and you enjoy like Atlanta, the Atlanta woodworking show or whatever case with you, maker central is nothing like that <laughs> okay this is this is this is this is the whole world going ah you know the the clouds part and the angels sing it's freaking everything um and it's exciting to go there and it's exciting to be there yeah yeah it's awesome do you guys um do you guys have anything that uh, i mean jamie I, I, and steve i don't know if you because last year you worked the yorkshire grit booth for quite some time and I, and hey and you know you, you nobody complained about that and that's cool but it, it did it didn't offer you the opportunity to walk around and do a lot of things that you know other people did are you working any kind of booth this year no uh, well yes and no i'm um i'm doing the make with makers booth with us the right. podcast and with a few of the other guys, um, Red Smith, I think, isn't Red doing? Some yeah, Red. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Al, uh, Al, Al and Sophie are doing Al, stuff for. Al, 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 Al. Yeah, Soph, uh Make it Soph. Um, make it Soph. Hel Helen, 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 make it with Helen, Helen. Yeah. Yeah, make with Ellen. Um, I think there's sewing and all that, but uh, I'll be wood turning. I'm bringing my equal lathe. And I'll be wood turning on and off on that stand, but I'm not going on any other booths anywhere else. So um, I'll get to enjoy the show a bit more this year. I, I was now I wasn't tied to the stand last year. I, you know, I had the option to go off and enjoy the show, um, but I you just feel yourself because I was demonstrating for Yorkshire Grit. I felt obliged to stay there and do what I'd agreed to do. Right. You know, you, you have obligations when you're turning. Um, I wasn't made to stay there in a, 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 at all, but um, I just felt because it was a steady trickle and there was constantly people coming over, I never really had the chance to say, I'm going away for a couple of hours. I'll be back, you know, because. You felt a, a booth, to be afraid. Yeah, a booth that's demonstrating a product, not demonstrating for two hours, it does show. So. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I tell you what. If you if you go to the Maker Central website again, if you're interested and you want to see the layout of it, there Nick actually has on there the layout of the show on that website. You can go there and see all the different vendors that are going to be there and what the actual layout of the room will be. Um, and there's a main stage, I believe it's off to the top right, and there's another stage off to the left. And the Maker booth, the Make with Makers booth that you guys are going to be involved with, is going to be by the stage that's on the left um i think yeah i think and i think it's encompassing three booths and there's there's gonna be a lot of people i know steve from moonshine metalworks and he and his buddy are going to be doing their are going to be doing some metalworking but that's not going to actually happen inside the show that's going to be outside because it involves fire and sparks and you know fire marshals tend to front on that inside um so they're going to be doing something in a separate area so not only is there something going to be going on inside but there'll be something going on outside as well so if you want to check out some metalworking and some forging steve and his crew will be out there too there's yeah. there's been a uh, an interesting comment over in the uh in the chat by make foul repeat he said uh he said, don't try and take your Yorkshire grit home on the plane in uh, in the hand luggage. They class it as a liquid, and they threw his away last year. Yeah, yeah always. a lot of people got caught out that with that a lot. That's, of yeah. that's good advice. Yeah. I'll tell, I, I tell you what happened, um, and it didn't happen to me from Maker Central, but it happened to me elsewhere, was if you buy something from the show, a tool, and whatever, because you, and you want to, then I would say absolutely go ahead and do it. But put it in your checked baggage. And if you feel nervous about it, wondering, you know, if people are going to look at this and, and flag your luggage, then just declare that it's in there when you check your baggage. Just say, hey, look, I've got a lathe tool 
in my baggage. I don't want any problems with that. So I'm letting you know right now that it's in there. Mm -hmm. And once you declare it, your baggage will not get searched. It'll be fine. They'll put a tag on it. You'll be okay. But do not try to carry it on the plane. If you carry it on, if whatever you buy at the show, put in your checked baggage. Let's just play it safe. I mean, unless it's a, a toothpick, it, you know, <laughs> I mean, so you, you will, really if, yeah. if you're carrying any sharp tools like lathe tools or anything tool related, don't freak out when they ask you to go to the um, dangerous luggage <laughs> um, yeah. uh, section in the airport. Don't freak out. They're not going to think that you're, you're a terrorist trying to do anything. But uh, that's where you go because your luggage is, in theory, dangerous. So that's where they will send you uh, right. if you've got tools on in your bag. But I know people have got freaked out and kind of thought, no! And even people stop buying stuff like that because they got caught out with that the last time don't worry as chris said anything you buy if you declare it you're going to be good you might have to pay taxes maybe on a certain things but at least you know you're going to get that particular item home yeah and it happened yeah. to me in atlanta because i was and this was just traveling within the country i bought a burnishing tool for my for my card scrapers um in atlanta and I mistakenly didn't put that in my check baggage. I put it in my carry-on baggage. And, oh, boy, did alarms go off when they saw that thing. Um, and, I, and I had to explain to the gentleman there. Luckily, I was able to get away with it. And I told him what it was and what it was used for. And it wasn't sharp. It was just a metal rod. But I got scolded like you would not believe about trying to do that and told never to do that again. So just check, put in your check baggage and then declare it if you're worried about it and then forget about it. You'll be fine. Fix it up, make it new. Yes, 100% bring stickers. Everyone, bring stickers. Make yep. it central is sticker swap central. Yes, big time. They even get put into the roof. And if you haven't got stickers, you can purchase them, can't you, Jamie? Yes, you Where can. can Over at makersinternationalpodcast.co.uk. <laughs> And and if you do that, you get twenty pounds off of your order, uh, which in the United States is about twenty five dollars off of your order. So I mean, but you know, yeah. but you can't, you can't order them from the states. I mean, they're basically for the UK oh, residents and people abroad. UK, yeah. 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 If you're interested in stickers, we have a place on our website that you can go to and you can get twenty pounds off your stickers. It's what we buy our. It's where we bought our stickers yeah. last year, wasn't it, Jamie? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. So, so yeah, you, you get twenty pound off fat checkout. So, yeah, it's, a couple uh, it's a good of deal. people in the chat asked if I will be giving lessons um, over the weekend. Yes, um, but because of the setup, we are going to limit it to new wood turners, novices that don't have that much knowledge about wood turning, and kids. Um, because I'm I'm mainly going to be turning pens. But I am going to be doing a couple of banana demonstrations, and I'm going to have bowls and um, and spindle turning stuff there, just in case I get asked questions. I can throw something up and I can demonstrate it. So yes, I will be giving tuition and lessons to people if they want to know particular things. But if you're any ways um, confident around a lathe, it, I'd probably be wasting your time, unless it's a particular question about a particular thing about wood turning i'd probably be, be wasting your time uh with you coming over because it's just going to be the basics i'm going to be showing people because what we're trying to do because make with makers is just what it sounds like it's people that want to give something a go for the first time or maybe a, a second or somebody who may understand the process but is a novice and so they're coming over to get some education so if you are a qualified turner then don't expect to be given time to so that you can have a go on the lathe. That's not what this is about. It's to help people get involved with the making aspect. Uh, it's all about yeah. helping people get involved with the maker community as opposed to supporting the maker community, if that makes sense. I will answer any questions that you have. I will answer any questions to anybody that they have, and I will demonstrate a particular thing if you if if it needs to be demonstrated. But um, what I can't do is stand there doing a half hour um, lesson on how to hollow out a bowl because I'm holding the gouge wrong. Um, you know, <laughs> I can't do that because, because people that have never tried it before are going to be there wanting to just say, Oh, can I just have a try? Especially kids. Yeah. And if you're a grown ass adult standing there, I'm sorry, but the three kids in front of you are going to get a go way before you, because that's just the way I am. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, no, and, and, well, and, and that's what and that's what the whole booth was set yeah. up for in the first place. Yeah. Because it was not only for kids, but it was for people that were looking to get turned on to a certain aspect of making, whether it is lathe turning or Jamie, because you're going to be there doing scroll sawing, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So if yeah. you've got, so, I mean, if Charles Deering was at the show, he would not have the opportunity to give it a go because obviously he doesn't need to be the one to, to learn about scroll song. It would be the no, kids exactly. and yeah. the people who, yeah. so, I mean, let's be honest. And then Richard's going to be there doing stuff with his router. He's also going to be building a noodle step. Uh, we got uh, the Red Smith, who I believe is going to be doing leather work. Uh, this Craftswood Ellen, who's doing sewing. Um, I believe Cat Richards, uh, Richards better half, is going to be doing some airbrushing. Um, th and th there were a ton. And, and Al and Sophie are going to be there doing kids projects to get the kids involved as well. So mm -hmm. it's very much an introduction to making booth. So if if you are an accomplished maker and you're looking to go get something from that booth. You're going to be sadly disappointed unless you want to go get something by meeting Jamie, Steve, or the people I mentioned before, because they'll be there doing it. And you guys aren't going to be there all day, right? You guys are going to be spending a few hours and then taking off and enjoying yourselves. I mean, you guys aren't committed to that booth like you yeah, were yeah. like. I mean, I'll, I'll be doing projects, like small ones that, that maybe take half an hour to get a couple of them done, give them, a, give them away, and then go and do something, you know, because I've got, I've got three booths to deal with. Yeah, and it's like Steve House. You know, I mean, if you if you go outside and then you want to do the forging thing, I mean, I think you'll be lucky if he shows you how to make a nail. I mean, you're not going to get in, and, and experienced forgers aren't going to go there to learn about forging. I mean, Steve's going to be doing that for people who don't have a clue about it. Yeah. So that's just got that. But I, and I think that's kind of the general atmosphere of the entire show is just for people to get into different kind of various aspects of it. Now, obviously – if you are an experienced leather worker and you have a question, I'm sure the folks at Tandy who are looking to sell you products will be happy to answer you, but the make with makers booth, isn't going to be selling anything. It's just going to be done for display and for giveaways. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. And basically the, the, the way, um, Forging bananas. Forging nice bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I've already asked him. He, he, he already owes me a forged banana. Um, yeah, uh, and the way we're working it as well, it's going to be kind of done in a, a lucky dip situation with the pen turner as well. So um, you're going to get to come and dip your hand in a bag full of blanks, take out a blank and uh, have a go at turning a, a pen if you've never done it before um, and, and give it a go. So um, and also, I mean, yeah, like like that, I'm not going to be fixed to the booth, but knowing me and knowing my personality, I think I'm going to be meeting most of the people I want to meet while at the booth so if i'm enjoying myself i'll i'll hang around there i mean let's be honest it's only going to take an hour or two to to walk around the place and see everything so you know as long as i get to experience certain things around around the show over the weekend i'll be a happy man and getting to to meet people so yeah, yeah. I don't, and uh also if you if you happen to see uh steve with tears running down his face it's just because he's had uh his ass handed to him in our little contest just saying <laughs> <laughs> do i look worried jp oh yes no T team turner against team scroll saw we'll see um richard I, I, well, well no, I'll, I'll share this because richard said this to us in a private message so i'll just go ahead and bone he, richard's on uh on the hook as saying he's got his money on jamie um to win the competition steve i'm afraid i'm with you I don't know how much luck I am, but Jamie, I think you're going down to Team Turner. I honestly do. So we're gonna we Let's are see. we as a podcast, we are absolutely divided on this. So you've got Steve and I in one hand, Richard and Jamie on the other. I mean, we'll see. Let's I see. mean, I don't, I don't under, I don't I don't see. want to understate your uh, sneaky underhanded. I, I would just Steve. like to say, <laughs> I would just like to say that Jamie Page, is it an advantage? Because yes, Jamie Page has had many, many hours behind the lathe. And yes, many, 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 many hours behind the scroll saw. Whereas I have had two hours behind my scroll saw <laughs> and many hours behind my lathe. So, but <laughs> hashtag Team Turner. Look at all those hashtag Team Turners already in the, in the, uh, chat. Also, so, uh, uh, also, I don't can, afraid, can, be can, very I, can I just say, look at that picture uh, behind Steve up on his wall there. 
that says Team Scrollsaw. I think he's got a hidden secret, don't you? Oh, geez. that was that was that was last year's. I was one of very few that actually took part in the hashtag Team Scrollsaw. I, uh, and I, we are I, uh, throwing it out, I believe, are we? Uh, I, yeah, I, I'm just hey, I'm just trying to be impartial here because I am obviously not a well experienced scroll saw artist, and I am obviously not a well experienced turner. I just happen to think, and my inclination is to believe that m people are more passionate about their lathe work than they are about the scroll saw work. There, there think, are a lot more turners than I, uh, I think. I think it could be close, but I think if I'm just looking at where the passion lies for each tool, I think Team Turner probably has the edge. I could be wrong. I mean, and I'm happy to I, be wrong. I would just like to know, as, just as a matter of interest, what classes a winning scroll saw project and what classes a winning turning project? I mean, what is this going to be judged on? Is my question because well, you know we what? really I, need we need a certain few ground rules. I think for I think said I, challenge. I think what needs to happen is since Richard is Team Scroll Saw and I'm Team Turner, and neither one of us are taking part in this, I think that he and I need to get together and decide the ground rules and not tell you, either one of you, what the rules are going to be. So I don't want Jamie playing up to going, oh, I can take advantage of that, or Steve going, oh, I can take advantage of that. And then let Richard and I, let's just let Richard and I decide how it will be judged. And I think we'll be doing it. We were going to, we initially when I was going, we were going to do it at Maker Central, but I think we should probably postpone that and do it like the week after maker central and find out who the winner is what do you think uh yeah whatever you decide okay and then all right and i'm not going to give you any inkling because i have an idea of how it should be judged but it, it doesn't favor either one of you but i'm not going to tell you what it is because there is a loophole in there that you guys could exploit that i'm going to leave alone um <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> and and knowing both of you, you each would. Uh, anyway, so guys, um, we are running down on time, but next week we're going to be talking about this again. But um, a lot of the focus is going to be on things that we didn't talk about today, such as um, what activities there may be for people to do outside of Maker Central in case they want to grab a couple buds and go travel around in case you're new to the UK and you want to go make a, you know, yeah. be a, be a tourist. We can talk about that. There's also, we can, we can hopefully we'll be able to line up with some people next week that we're actually going to be there uh, at maker central that can join us in the conversation next week. So next week we're going to handle part two of maker central and hopefully by then we'll have everything wrapped up and you guys will be more excited than you already are. If that's possible about going. So yes. gentlemen, <laughs> Shout outs. Does anybody have any? Oh, wait a minute. No, Jamie. Oh, I've got to do. Jamie's page. Thank you, oh, sir. Gosh. Appreciate it. I appreciate that. No song. worries. No worries. So, uh, the only uh, order of business I've got is uh, Dave the Hairdresser has just hit uh, 200 <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> so, uh, well Dave, well, done, Dave. Uh, well done, Dave. Dave the Wood Barber. Okay. If you're looking for Dave, it's Dave the Wood Barber. There you go, Jamie. All right. Uh, oh, I want to give a uh, I want to give a, a, a shout out to his uh, his better half, Joe, as well, because damn, she's got to put up with a lot. Yeah, Dave the Wood. <laughs> Dave. Dave the Wood Butcher. Uh, barber. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not saying anything because Dave and I are already kind of. <laughs> I'm already in. <laughs> I'm already in the weeds with Dave, so it's just not my same shit. <laughs> right. Uh, so I'll, I'll get to my shout out now. So my shout out goes to um, Gil the Bearded Woodworker. That's G U I L. Um, now he's a, he's a he's a maker from Australia, better known for his wood turning. Uh, he's just he's just an awesome guy all round. He, he's got a, a, an awesome sense of uh, sense of humour. So yeah, go and uh, go and check him out. He does some he does some great work. So yeah, Gil the bearded woodworker. Awesome, Steve. What do you got? I have a a, a different kind of shout out this week, uh, and it's more for YouTube. It is a YouTube channel. It's called Creator Inside Insider Creator Insider, and the title of the video is YouTube Notifications: An In Depth Breakdown of the Bell. Um, I, I just know that in past um, shows, people have said in the chat that they hit the bell icon for YouTube 
and uh, it doesn't they don't always get notifica notifications for when people go live or when they put up new videos and they think well YouTube must be doing something they're knocking us off and th this gives you a reason why that might be happening that there are default settings that you need to go back and when you hit that bell it gives you all three different settings and they give you an in-depth uh, insight on how all that works so I would advise you to go and watch that and maybe if you are into the YouTubes maybe sign up to a couple of the YouTube channels that are out there where they're giving you information because uh, it is uh, it is interesting stuff leave it to YouTube yeah. to, make, to make it so easy that they say hit the bell and be notified but then they go oh but you also need to do these other three steps <laughs> yes exactly yeah thank yeah. You for, yeah thank you for making yeah. it so user-friendly YouTube Fuck yeah you yeah know. um anyway <laughs> it's Steve. you just let it out let it out Chris do you want a hug you like, okay? No, no, I, no! I don't care. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking about the people who do care. What, how much frustration they must be going through. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so, okay. it's Chris, YouTube, it's be fine. Hey, we love you. We're here on your platform. We're not going to talk about you bastards too much. Um, uh, <laughs> my shout out goes to uh, Doug Keeling. Did you guys see Doug's video this week on YouTube called uh, "The YouTube Maker Blues"? <laughs> no, I don't think I did. Uh, it sounds sounds ab intriguing absolutely brilliant no doug did a song about and he wrote it and performed it extremely well about me i mean if you haven't seen it doug keeling last name k-e-e-l-i-n-g the youtube maker blues go watch it not only is it very good but it's also very freaking funny so doug well done my friend i enjoyed that immensely i laughed my ass off throughout that video it was great um so that's my shout out this week. Awesome. Great stuff. I must check that out. Sounds like fun. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of singing, speaking of singing, are we still having our, having our sing off? We should, even though I can't be there. Yeah. I'm going. Think, well, there's nothing stopping you from coming on the big screen and doing it live, Chris. I'll Don't do try it. and get out yeah. of it that way. You've got I'll a know. webcam and yeah. internet, pal. I'll do it live. <laughs> I don't care. If you want to put me up there, I'll perform. I, you know, I'll let people I think we've got to. I think we've got to put it out to people to uh, are they choose the song for us. Or? Well, well, by the time that you guys get me up on a big screen, half the audience is going to be drunk, so it'll be like singing karaoke. It'll be going, "Oh no, it's freaking great!" We have <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. I love you, man. I love, love you, you, man. I love I love you so much. <laughs> Look how high I got Al sticker. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have no clue how to be throwing his bra at the audience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's wrap this up. <laughs> oh, if we have to. Have um, to are, we, bra are, we, uh, are we staying around for an after show for patrons that aren't really patrons, but if they were patrons, it would, wouldn't be free anyway, show? If, they, if we want, yes, we probably will. But in the meantime, Stephen, Jamie, Thank you. And everybody in the chat, thanks for joining us today. You guys have a great week. See you later, everybody. Bye. <laughs>